Hello, Steve White, Steve White, 39. Well, I, um, it's Mother's Day. Um, Mother's Day is not the most fun. Um, I lost my mother three years ago, and the pandemic hasn't exactly helped. So I was thinking, okay, how can I be remotely productive this Mother's Day instead of just being miserable and listening to Madonna's promise to try and repeat? I thought, hmm, how about I watch that movie I bought years ago, uh, Mother's Day? literally about Mother's Day. It was made in 2016. Um, I bought it not long, my mum had cancer, but not long before she passed. I guess I thought I'd watch it on Mother's Day. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I haven't, hadn't watched it. I watched it this year. I said, you know what, I'm going to watch that this year, and I'm going to do a review, and it's going to give me something to do today to focus on besides my mother not being here and everyone else having Mother's Day. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not fun. Um, it's, um, I know I'm not the only person, I'm not the first person to lose a parent, um, but yeah, I was very close and mama's boy, all that stuff. And with the pandemic just being really isolated, it's just made it even worse, so I just had to do something this year. So I watched it. Um, as I said, it was 2016. It was directed by Gary Marshall. Uh, narrated by Penny Marshall, written by some other Marshall. Um, it was okay. They've done a series of these films because apparently Gary knew he didn't have long and he obviously wanted his grandchildren to, you know, be rich, so he thought he'd make a bunch of films about holidays which would sort of live in um, maturity, is it? Um, so they've done Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, New Year's Eve, what were the other ones? They did another one, didn't they? They did a bunch of them. And I don't mind, because being like a single gay man with no family, I find I need to make my own traditions and make things um, traditional for like certain holidays. And since I'm a movie person, I studied cinema and media in, in um, uni, and um, I kind of find it's a good way for me to um, actually commemorate things, have a movie for that. Like whenever... Um, we have Friday the 13th, I watch a movie. Whenever I watch the Friday the 13th Hall movies. And we have Halloween, I watch the movies. Whenever um, anything happens on a holiday that there's a movie for, I watch it. So I thought, okay, I started watching those films. I thought they were just the idea was actually cool. And I thought, as long as they're not too lame, they don't try too hard to be like crowd pleasers, they could actually be good. They're okay. Now this one I found the most complicated because they're all based on the same idea of having a whole bunch of stories so you cover everyone um, sort of interconnected in one bigger story of the day. Now this one, of course, Mother's Day, it's all about mothers, but um, not 100% about mothers. There's some fathers in there as well. There's um, a father who's lost his wife. Um, she died, I guess, in the war because they show footage of her doing karaoke for her daughters. Um, when she, she looks like she's on an army base or something, so you don't get a lot of information, but so we've got that guy. And we've got Jennifer Aniston, because the main stars really are Julia Roberts and Jennifer Aniston, and Kate Hudson, who I didn't recognise the whole film. I was like, who is that blonde lady? I've never seen her before. And then I see the credits, I'm like, oh, it was Kate Hudson. Goldie would not be happy. Um, so yeah, um, Jen was good. It was weird seeing Jennifer Aniston as a mother. I've just been watching her in Friends the last couple of weeks just on TV, just randomly. I don't know why. I don't know if they start showing it more or I just, just stumbled into the channel, but I've been watching it a lot the last week or two. And she's like you know, 20, and it was like 20 years ago, and I'm like, oh, yes, she's not a young girl anymore. Um, she's a woman. Um, and she reminded me a lot of my niece, who's older than me, who has kids. I don't know how many kids. Um, I'm the youngest of eight, and I have like... 20 nieces and nephews, I think, and I don't know who has what and how many, and I've, I can't remember anymore, um, and I never see them anyway because they're all in another state and none of them talk to me, so it doesn't matter, so I don't know who the, any of them are, but um, she does remind me of my niece, I remember her, because <laughs> I grew up with that one. Um, yeah, it was really weird to see her as an adult, and she was really good. I was totally with her the whole time. Um, basically, her husband remarries, of course, some young, silly, twinky, bimbo woman. Um, and, of course, she has to share her kids, and she does it quite graciously eventually. Um, and it was a fairly good story, that one. Um, there's another one with Sarah Chalky and Kate Hudson. 
I'm going to call it Baby Kate Hudson, but um, no. I don't know who's gay enough to get that at watching this, but yeah. Um, basically, they have a racist mother, or a very white, um, middle of America mother and father, parents, and <laughs> Kate Hudson has married an Indian guy, and Sarah Chalk is a lesbian. So they've been hiding that from their parents, and their mother and dad just show up for Mother's Day one year, surprising them and discovering that not only do they have <laughs> these lives, they also have kids um, adopted and, oh no, not adopted, sperm donor and um, just regular. And that's that, that actually got quite a soft ball, but I'm kind of glad it wasn't that realistic, an actual real, real sort of takedown of racism because um, it just would have made the film too nasty and too ugly. Um, basically, the mother, they sabotage the mother and she actually gets stuck there. They're, they're in a, um, a trailer, so they get out the front and they have a flat tire, and then while they're dealing with that, um, the lesbian gets her lesbian to go and mess around with the motor so they can't leave, so they stay around long enough to resolve their issues. So that's kind of nice. Um, the... The Indian husband is the biggest derp in the whole film because he he's not very happy that his wife lied to his parents about her parents about everything, him, the kid, everything, and um, and he she also lied about them being in um, a home for people with dementia. So he really really holds on to the last minute to let that go. Um, the other story that the the, the the that of course like I said they intertwine so of course the Jennifer Aniston character bumps into the father without um, the wife because she died and he's a bit of a jerk and a bit of a douchey he does like a rap song and breaks his leg um, yeah but um, at the end it looks like they're going to be friendly of course because that's the way the Hollywood films all end um, there's another girl, and she's related to the Julia Roberts character, who actually hires the Jennifer Aniston character, did I say they intertwine? Um, and she was adopted, and she's known who her mother is, but she hasn't made contact with her yet, and the mother had to wait for her to make contact. She's received a photo every year of her, but um, the parents died. She knew the parents had died, but um, she wasn't going to make contact until the girl made contact, so she finally makes contact. She's a famous um, author, so she shows up at one of his signings, she's, she's like, who, and who do I sign this to? To your daughter. I'm like, oh no, that's not the way to introduce yourself. So, she, she won't marry her husband because she doesn't know who she is because she doesn't know her mother. So eventually, of course, that ends well as well. And what was the last one? I think that's it. That's everyone. Um, I think that's all the people intertwined. Am I forgetting anyone? It was okay. I did feel it was a bit too many stories. Um... They didn't seem mother-centric enough. They were trying a bit too hard to like represent all the different types of mothers and mother's days and people's mother's days and families. Um, they might have gone with one less story and had them all focus on an actual living wife or mother, but um, overall they did a good job of writing it. Just like the other films, they're all good. They're not bad, but they're not great because they do try very hard to please everyone and the stories, you get a bit of everything, but you ne don't really... You don't really get any um, any focus, I don't know, um, on, on any one character. Or, or you sort of get attached and you sort of are liking this or that, but then, of course, you just move on to the next, you know. But um, I liked it. I watched it. I got through it. I didn't cry. Um, there was one moment where I nearly did, and that was just because um, um, it was funny. And then the ending credits have bloopers, which are actually half decent. And um, some of the ones with the kids are funny. I don't, I'm getting a little bit more sentimental with kids, I think. I don't know why. I think I just hate them a bit less than when I was younger. Because <laughs> I hate kids. Um, being a gay man, of course, I don't have any. don't want any. hate them. But um, I don't know. They bother me a bit less, especially when they're on the screen. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, that, that was me getting through today. I'm like, okay. Next, I'm watching Mommy Dearest. I've watched a few clips today from, um, the, from YouTube and that. And I'm going to watch the film... Which is going to be interesting. I'm going to do a review of that afterwards, but I'm actually going to do a little bit more research as well. I've been doing a bit of research on it. Well, I always have been. It's one of my favourite films. But um, So I'm going to look at that. And then I might do postcards from the edge. I need to get up a list of the best um, or most epic mother movies, and maybe that'll be my day on Mother's Day, just finding all the mother movies, all the movies with great 
character mothers that are a character in the film, even if it's not about them or about Mother's Day. I think that might be my new thing. I need a thing because I cannot sit around being miserable about my mother being dead all day. And I know people just say to focus on the positive, focus on, you know, when she was alive and all that. And I'm like, it really doesn't work. Um, it doesn't for me anyway. It hasn't for me so far. But, um, yeah. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, and probably watch Mother's Day. It's decent. Um, I think if, if you have a Mother's Day <laughs> free, or you need something to, you know, use on that day for some reason, for some mother-orientated, Mother's Day-orientated thing, I think it's perfectly acceptable. And that's all it goes for. <laughs> I'm going to go. Thanks. Bye.